While most people play the game with membership, I'm choosing to limit my account by not granting myself any of the niceties afforded by having a membership. And this time, I'm completing this challenge without dying. Welcome to the free-to-play hardcore Iron Man, better known as Archerberry. Would you look at that? We're getting this video started off with uh, beginner clue scroll. That's nice. And here's what I believe is the eighth beginner casket. Oh, I guess the air runes are nice, but and I guess the sealed place card will give me another 400 coins. But man, not the best clue scroll. Although that was certainly better than the last one. Oof. All right, and here we are for another positive note for this video. We're gonna go ahead and buy a adamant full helm. But first we have to find a world that's not overstocked, of course. Ah, there we go. How much for the full helm? Three and a half K? I'll take it. I got about half of that back from the gold from the Minotaurs anyway, so nice. All right, so here's what the two upgrades are going to give me. The Adamant Plate Legs are pretty much plus nine on all the melee and range defense. And then the Adamant Full Helm is five to six on the melee and range defenses. So with the Full Mithril plus the Iron Square Shield, unfortunately... <laughs> I'm sitting around 90s for the melee and range defenses, a little bit low on the crush. Then when you add the adamant plate legs and full helm, slightly tankier, over 100 for all except for the crush, which is just under 100. So yeah, looking a lot better. I just need to spend some time and actually get the smithing levels to upgrade this square shield or get a drop or something because wow, this is pretty bad. So I think the game plan for this video right now is going to be going for level 35 or so in all melee combat skills. And then afterwards, I think I'm going to do some quests to unlock the Champions Guild. That way I can go ahead and actually buy the Adamant Plate Body, and then eventually some Rune Gear and Green Dragon Hide down the road. And look at that, 33 attack coming in. After I bury these next few bones, then I will have a level 25 prayer. Boom, there we go. I can now use the Protect Item Prayer. It sounds useful, but hopefully I will never need to use it. Well, I actually did not realize that these guys would actually give me a lot of beginner clue scrolls. <sighs> I'm close to 34 attacks, so I'm going to get that first before I do the clue. So yeah, I'll check back in in a few minutes. You'd love to see it. A two-step clue. Couldn't that, couldn't that have been in like a black axe or something? That would have been so much more useful. Well, it turns out I wasn't paying attention, but I did get 35 attacks, so we're moving on to strength. Yet another clue scroll coming in. Let's go ahead and do it. And here's clue number nine. Couldn't have just been like a regular black axe. Come on. And that right there is 35 strength. I've been here for quite a while now. I've killed something like 700, 692 minotaurs. Well, actually, I, I just I just got off my laptop with 83 kills. So what is that? 765 minotaurs killed. So yeah, I've definitely killed quite a bit of these Minotaurs. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to bank right now because I'm getting too many of these Skull Pieces. But on the bright side, when I get that Skull Scepter, I know I'm never going to run out of charges for teleporting. Right now we're at 35 attack and strength and about halfway to 32 defense. You love to see it, I just got a one-step clue for number 11. Ugh, black Plate Body. I could have used that before, but now I have the Mithril one and it's just, I don't need it. Alright, here's yet another beginner casket. Alright, not the best casket, but I did get some body runes, some bronze arrows, and a staff of earth, so it's not too bad. It's not worth a whole lot, but definitely some useful items. Alright, there we go, that's 35 defense. I did get yet another clue scroll, and I also got an uncut diamond, which will be nice for down the road when I can make a power ambulance. But let's go do the clue scroll now and then move on to something else. Alright, and here's the unlucky number 13 casket. Yep, unlucky it is. So I think the next plan is going to be training magic for a bit, so I can unlock more teleport spells, enchant jewelry, etc. And also so I can kill some giant frogs and get a bunch of big bones to train prayer. And there we go, that's 31 magic. I can now teleport to Lumbridge. So actually I'm thinking I'm going to change my plans. I'm going to buy some chaos runes now. Oof, 100 is expensive. It's almost 10k for 100 casts. But so what I'm thinking now is I'm going to actually hit up the hill giants in the Edville dungeon. And see if I can get some like lull runes and other stuff off of them. On top of dropping big bones, they also have a decent chance of dropping cosmic runes, nature runes, lull runes, and a farther chance of chaos runes and death runes. So the trick with the hill giants will actually be finding a world that's open. The hill giants are very popular for their big bones and other drops in free to play. So let's hope we can find a decently empty world. I also brought with me a lull rune and a fire rune. 
as a sort of emergency teleport so I can get out of here just in case. I don't expect things will get too hairy too quickly, but it never hurts to have a fallback plan. All right. That's my very first limpert read on the account. Unfortunately, for every energy potion I want to make, I need two of these things, but having one now is a pretty good start. Score. That's a couple law runes right there from a hill giant. Well, there we go. I got 37 magic. I can teleport to Falador now, but that is my total level 500 for my free levels. And look at that. I got myself to 40 magic and also 29 prayer. The next thing I'm going to do is kill this monk of Zamorak and then telegraph its robes and then telegraph the robes it drops. That way I have some actual magic armor. Wait, what? All right, cool. There's the first robe piece. Boom. Three prayer bonus and some magic attack and defense. All right, so I actually started running low on some mind and air runes. So I'm actually going to start raging this guy now. Hopefully I can hit. Finally, after 44 kills, I got the Zamrock Monk top. Ugh. That was annoying. Okay, since I did get a couple cosmic runes from the hill giants, I'm going to use one right now and some water runes to enchant the Sapphire Amulet. Boom. There we go. There's our best in slot amulet for magic. Well, there's our best in slot magic gear. It's really not the best because I could change out the Zamrock Monk top for a wizard robe, which adds a plus one magic attack bonus. But really beyond this, there really isn't a whole lot to do. With the amulet of accuracy, what we had before was plus 16 magic. With the amulet of magic and the Zamrock robes, we have plus 26. Not a huge difference. That's only a plus 10 attack bonus difference, but I will still take it. Okay, here's clue 14. Cabbage, sardine, and a steel plate skirt. Really? I'm back here mining again, and I think I'm going to have to do a bit of mining and smithing every episode. That way I can keep it moving along and getting closer to level 90 for the rune Timitar. And although I said last time was probably going to be the last time I mined iron, there are two reasons why I'm not quite doing steel yet. The first reason being, I don't want to mine coal quite yet until I have like 55 mining or so. Otherwise, it'll just be too slow. Secondly, I do also have a trick up my sleeve since I have a bunch of rubies in the bank. Even though I can't enchant them, I did find out that I can actually make ruby rings and trade them with 250 gold coins each to some dude in the Grand Exchange that will make them into rings of forging so that every single iron ore that I try to smelt will get turned into an iron bar. And that's 51 mining coming in. Would you look at that? That's my first clue geode. Obviously, all that does is give you a clue scroll, sort of like a clue bottle gives you from fishing. Okay, here's a casket for that beginner clue, and I believe it's casket 15. Not a whole lot, but I will definitely take a few more law runes. Oh, well, I wasn't paying attention to my inventory, but I got another beginner clue. Gotta go to Lumbee. All right, here's beginner casket number 16. Ugh, gross. Well, Evil Bob is treating me to a fishing level. That's nice. And look at that. I got yet another clue scroll while mining. Oh yes, the fabled one-step clue. Ooh. Bare feet? Certainly not useful, but that's definitely another unique, so... Cool, I'll take it. Honestly, I think we found peak fashionscape. These uh, bare feet are looking pretty hot. It's only episode 3, but I guess we can call this the bare feet era. Here is yet another beginner casket. Oh my god. So, to break up the mining grind a little bit, I decided I'm going to do Demon Slayer. It's not really a hard quest. Uh, I figure I'll go ahead and do it just to knock that out uh, and get a little closer to doing Dragon Slayer. So yeah, let's go ahead and do this. All right, I have all three keys. It is time to fight Delrith. Once this dude gives me Silverlight, of course. All right, here's the big fight. Delrith is dead. Oh, ah, uh, wait. Uh, just, just, where are my notes? Crap, I just closed the tab. Oh, sweet. Okay. All right. Need that. Oh no, that's a good old misclick. Ha, huh, look at that, a one hit. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Life pro tip, don't misclick. There we go. Well, Delrith is dead. Dark Dimension is closed and three quest points. Awesome. All right, drum roll please. Here's Clue Casket 19. That's kind of depressing. Well, I got another Clue Squirrel while mining and I think this is Casket number 20. Ooh, the Frog Slippers. More Fashionscape. So right now I'm actually pretty close to level 60 mining. Uh, next inventory should do it if I did the math correctly, which it's like a 50-50 shot if I did. But either way, this inventory will get me to 5,500 iron ore. And of course I keep moving the goalposts. <sighs> so now I think I'm going to go for like 7,500 or 8,000 iron ore. 
It's actually going a lot faster than I expected. I figured it would take me like four weeks to get like 10,000. And so far I'm at 5,500 after a few days. Then like I said, next inventory, there's level 60 mining. If I was a member, I could now mine day out essence. Oh, that would be cool. If only. But yeah, now I can use the mining guild, which will be nice for when I start mining some coal. Oh, and I just realized that's the first level 60 stat on the account. How nice. And would you look at that? Yet another beginner clue from mining. Real quick, I figured I'd mention the uh, full frog prince outfit featuring the uh, newly acquired frog slippers. But anyways, here's the 21st beginner casket. Uh, I like it just because it's, there's more chaos runes for casting, but it's not a whole lot. So, you know, this mining grind is taking a while, but it is kind of nice that I am getting some extra clue scrolls out of it on top of other gems and other stuff that I'm getting from random events and whatnot. And here's Jesus' number of caskets. Oh, a staff of air. Well, I guess I can sell it for a little bit. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm actually going to be happy about that because that'll actually be like a thousand gold in the bank. And for some reason I forgot that I'm a hardcore Iron Man and money is hard to come by. Oh, I didn't even notice it, but I did get another beginner clue geode. I'm actually going to bank this for a little bit and do a couple more loads of iron ore just because I don't want to waste too much time doing clues. All right, here's that clue that I decided to put off, and yeah, it wasn't that good. And after I mine this iron ore, there is 61 mining. All right, so I'm currently at 6,800-ish iron ore, and I decided to take a break because I was getting annoyed with a lot of people hopping online now and starting to mine over top of me with their rim pickaxes. So during this break, I'm running over to Draenor to grab that chronicle, like I mentioned a moment ago. And afterwards, I'm going to run up to the Dwarven Mines and buy myself a rim pickaxe. That'll speed up the process just a little bit, and will hopefully help me a little bit when I'm trying to fend off people trying to mine over me. Alright, Diango, here we are. Let's get a Chronicle, and let's buy 20. Ooh, wow, those went up a lot. Let's wait for that to restock, and let's buy 10 more to get to 30 teleport charges. Boom, there we go, that's 30 teleport charges on the Chronicle. At some point when I have more money, and I'm back to mining Iron Ore, I might use this to teleport to the Champions Guild, just to speed up the process of mining a little bit. But for now, I'm going to save this for when I actually need it. All right, Nermoff, let's get a rim pickaxe. <sighs> it's a hard purchase to make, but I think it's worthwhile considering I'll be making a lot of money back when I make the iron plate bodies and sell them to Horvik and Verok. And it will also speed up the process for mining iron ore just a little bit. Definitely a worthwhile purchase. So along with this break, I'm actually going to tackle a couple of quests. The first quest being Goblin Diplomacy because it's really short and will give me five quest points. The only thing you need for Goblin Diplomacy are a few Goblin Males and red, blue, and yellow dye. I just got the wood leaves, as you saw, for the blue dye. Now I need to grab red berries and an onion for the red and yellow dyes. Okay, now we just gotta talk to Aggie to make the dyes. Let's head up to Goblin Village and complete the quest. All right, now we're in Goblin Village to do Goblin Diplomacy, and don't worry, I'm not going to bore you with all the nitty gritty details of this quest because it's really not that great of a quest. It's more of a chore that your parents asked you to do. The gist of it is that the village is feuding over which color armor they should wear and you help them resolve the conflict. You offer to generals Wartface and Ventnose three different colored armors, blue, orange, and the original brown color, and they decide that brown is the best color moving forward. They all rejoice, and you're left wondering what the heck just happened with the last week of your life that led you to this point. Either way, there's a quest completed. Let's just move on. Next up is going to be the Prince Alley Rescue Quest, which is why I'm wasting a little bit of my hard-earned money on a pink skirt, of all things. So yeah, I need to get a bunch of items, and then I'll go ahead and do the quest. Alright, now that I've spent a few ages getting all the stuff, let's start the Prince Alley Rescue Quest. This is another easy quest. Obviously, it's more than just talking to, like, two NPCs for, like, four minutes. I'll check back in when something big happens. All right, and there we go. There's Prince Alley Rescue completed. Three more quest points, and I wasn't expecting it, but 700 coins. That's certainly appreciated. And I also just realized, after completing Goblin Diplomacy, I can get into the Champions Guild now. Uh, let's check on the cost of the Adamant Plate Body and, and grab one. Awesome. This is the first time on this account that I'm entering the Champions Guild. Obviously, I now have Dragon Slayer unlocked, but more importantly, this unlocks some shops upstairs that sell some equipment that will be very useful for combat. 
Scavo sells a good bit of rune items, notably the rune plate legs and plate skirt, rune chain body, and green dragon hide legs and van braces. With only 17k on the account currently, I can't buy too much here, although I will buy myself a coif for range training since it's only 200 coins. Ooh, the adamant plate body is over 21k. Honestly, I may hold off on that and just go straight for rune, since selling it back to the store would probably lose me like 9 or 10k. And realistically, I am getting pretty close to being able to wear rune equipment as it is, so that'll probably just be a waste if I do that. I don't feel like getting back to mining quite yet, so I decided I'm going to start training some range, since that is falling behind quite a bit. As you can see, I'm killing some barbarians because they should die rather quickly, and they do offer some drops like law runes and such that can help me out later. I just got myself 20 range, but anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hit the like button and subscribe if you liked the video. I have a whole lot more awesome content in the pipeline that you won't want to miss. I hope you all have a great day, and I will catch you in the next one.